Well hey, I'm Mark, an art teacher, a professional artist, and in this week's video I'm going to show you how to draw hair. Completely unnecessary if you ask me, but this is a topic that's been requested a lot, so I don't know. Alright, I guess I'll show you. Let's get started. All right, let's draw hair for these characters. Honestly, I don't think they need anything more. Bald is best, but if you must add hair to your characters and you're not happy with the results you're getting, you've come to the right place. We'll fix that. At this point, if you're asking yourself, wait, I don't even know how to draw heads yet. Well, maybe this tutorial I posted a few weeks ago will help. So check it out. You can find it in the top right corner of the screen here or down in the description below. Now, before we jump right into the steps we'll go over today, there are some requirements for this tutorial. Required skills, rather. So here's what you should make sure to practice before tackling hair, or if drawing hair is a struggle right now. First thing, you'll want to make sure that you can pretty easily draw simple volumes in perspective. Things like boxes, cylinders, spheres. Actually, that's it. And practice those in the same space overlapping each other. Why? Well, hair is basically just a more complex version of this, and you should be able to draw a lot of simple haircuts if you can clear this easily. Second, slightly more difficult, but you'll need this to draw long hair. So practice drawing ribbons floating in the air. Something like this, maybe. So for those ribbons, we wanna make sure that we give it at least a two dimension. And when it curves like this, you can try practicing having the ribbon kind of flip on itself. And then we can add a little bit of shadow to indicate in which direction it's bending. The kind of stuff that you want to be paying attention to here when drawing ribbons would be to make sure that the two lines that you use here for the width of your ribbon, that they're never too far apart, right? If the ribbon was just unfolded, it would be kind of this long rectangle. So be mindful of its width. And basically when drawing the second curve, you just want to make sure that you kind of follow the first one, but offset it just slightly. First one like this, and if we look at the other one here, it's basically the same one, but just rotated maybe a little bit more this way. And then from here, you can add another one. Similar lines, but slightly different. Maybe this one curves a little sooner. Then we're going to give it its thickness. Now, what we're left with here is a similar hair strand to the first one, or in this case, similar ribbon, about like 70% similar. Once again, if you can clear this, I know it's more difficult, but you should be able to drop pretty much any hairstyle you can imagine. Because once you have something like this, it's very easy to turn this into just a bunch of hair instead. So we can combine the two here at the root to make it seem like it's the same bunch of hair and then at the tip we have smaller strands kind of flare out in more random direction and here we only have two but you can imagine that if we did this for an entire haircut it probably look decent now back to the tutorial here we have a bunch of characters and uh, well they need hair the very first step will be to find where the hairline is using the same proportions and the same guidelines as from the head drawing tutorial. Well, if we have the nose here at the green line, the eyebrows at the blue line, well, the hairline will go at exactly the same distance as between those two. In this case, nose, eyebrows, hairline. And then on the side here, it just goes kind of around the temporal section of the skull, like a little curve here going towards the ears and then a little bit more for sideburns. You can do the same process here. Nose, eyebrows, hairline, running down the temples and the sideburns. Nose, eyebrows, hairline, ship it. Same for females, you get the idea. Step number one, check. The next step then will be to figure out what the rough silhouette of our haircut is going to be like. Now here, when I say rough, I mean rough. We don't want any details. It's the kind of stuff that you could do in like 15 seconds. And this is where it gets a little tricky because that's where we're going to be figuring out what kind of hair we really want for a character. So is it going to be like curly hair? Is it more like an afro? Long? Short? But also, is it going to be silhouette defining for your character? Or is it something more like a, like a haircut like that? Where the haircut itself really doesn't attract that much attention versus something like this maybe. Or if we went a little crazier, where clearly the haircut is part of the design. Which is it going to be? The kind of stuff that I like to think about at this particular step here would be what a sample bunch of hair would look like for my characters. So for her, you know, it would be something very curly, like a fat strand of hair. For this one over here, just nice and long and silky. For this guy here, looks more like a leaf almost. And a little K-pop singer here. Well, he's also got kind of a leaf pattern going on, but more distorted. A little curlier. Now this shape here is what is going to basically make up the rest of the haircut. So it's good to have a clear one in mind. 
Now, some of these are missing hair, so let's add that in. Now, the hairline, of course, we don't need to keep that in here. It's just something to keep in mind. I'm going to reduce the opacity to get that out of the way. And we're going to give this guy here a flat top hair. So if you were to draw like a, an afro or something similar like that, basically, all you got to do is follow the hairline and then create basically any shape you want for the, the hair that's taken out. If this is going to be like coarse black hair, you can add a little bit of texture to suggest that this is in fact an afro. That style probably the easiest one. And then for the female character here, what we can do is um, maybe a more flamboyant hairstyle. Something like that, maybe. Once again, like I said, something that only takes a couple seconds to draw. Now here, if your main problem is that you don't have any ideas, well, you don't need to come up with all the ideas yourself. Just like everything else in art, if you don't have the visual library yet, build it up. Go on the intrawebs and find a bunch of references. It can be from real life, or it can be from, from cartoons, comics, animes, whatever. There's an infinite amount of ideas out there. Go and get inspired. I do have maybe one quick tip that you can think about when drawing these. And it's to keep in mind the kind of personality that you want your character to have. So let's say your character is like this aggressive character. Well, maybe his hair is going to be a little bit more spiky. That reminds you more of like knives, something dangerous. On the other hand, if you have a character that's a little bit more gentle, delicate, well, think of other shapes that also share those same characteristics. Maybe you don't want anything that reminds you of a knife, right? So maybe more like curves swirls in any case step number two check now then when it comes to the details there's two things that we want to keep in mind number one start thinking of the scalp as having different sections four different sections actually first the bangs so it's going to be this area right here now that's where most of the hair that will potentially cover the face partially or completely will originate from but this could also be kind of like slick back in any case i feel like this is the area of the hair in general that will impact the personality the most so it's uh, kind of important next we have the sides of the head now sometimes this part of the hair will behave the same way as the top of the hair but but sometimes it won't, right? Like in this case here, we have the top section kind of going to the side here and both sides section going towards the back. In the other case here, we have the side sections going down and well, the front section doing the same thing, going down as well. And the only reason why I mentioned four sections is because I count the sides separately because sometimes, you know, the haircut will be different on both sides. But yeah, of course, the final section will be kind of like just the back of the head and the hair coming from that portion of the scalp usually will follow kind of whatever's around it. So maybe not as important, but I find that having those those different regions in mind when you start to make sense of your haircut definitely helps. I feel like it makes the process maybe a little bit less random. Now, I did mention there were two things that we should be looking at, and the second one will be the rule of thirds. And this one will come in particularly handy when it comes to adding the details within the bigger shapes that uh, we already have. So how the rule of third would apply for a shape like this, what you would need to keep in mind is that two thirds of this entire area should be untouched. And usually that will be the center of the shape. What this leaves us with are the two sides. So the equivalent of one third of the entire shape. And here what I like to add are lines starting from, well, from the root usually, and from the tip kind of running along the side of the shape. So very simply, something like that. As you can see here, I'm leaving the center of the mass pretty much untouched and only really adding details uh, on the edges and at the root and the tip. Two thirds, no detail, one third of details. And while this is a time where we can start to add uh, a little bit more volume to this, this strand of hair, this bunch of hair. So maybe this actually flips. So just like we did with the ribbon here, can introduce a little bit of 3D maybe. So all this part of the hair kind of goes underneath can break up those lines make them a little bit less even maybe curve a little bit some of them can kind of merge or fork out from so when i talk about the rule of third this is exactly what i'm talking about here it's how you spread out the details within your shape more simply maybe let's say you had this shape and you want to spread the details nicely in here well you leave the two thirds in the center pretty much untouched and then you can add the details on the side. Now, there you go. This is what we're talking about here at an abstract level. And so let's keep working on this one here. And what we're going to do, like I said uh, earlier in this tutorial, we're going to basically be pasting this shape here, copy pasting the shape all over the place to well, finalize the haircut, trying to maintain the silhouette that we have here. All right, beautiful. And now we can see that I am pretty much done with, uh, well, the top of my head. So I'm moving on to the sides here. Probably not gonna have to worry about the other sides. And so maybe in this guy's case, he's going to have shorter hair on the side here. Maybe not shaved, but definitely more like a mohawk. And so I'm going to treat the entire area here 
as one of those shapes, making sure that I keep my rule of thirds in mind, focusing the details here at the root and at the tip and leaving the center of the mass mostly untouched. And then we're gonna have the back of the head or the rest of the mohawk. So maybe let's add a couple of smaller ones to add a few more details to that silhouette. All right, so now if we remove the hairline, we really don't need that. And we kind of use tiny lines following the direction of the different hair strands. Maybe we can give this guy some sideburns here. A few details at the root, some more at the tip on the edges of the shape. Sometimes, of course, those are just guidelines. You don't need to follow this for every single strand, right? So sometimes you can break one in half. That's fine too. As long as when you squint, the ratio kind of looks like this one. But uh, yeah, this guy's got a haircut now. Looks a little crazy, but I'm not here to judge. Next, if we move on to our um, K-pop singer guy, <laughs> um, well, we just have a little bit of cleanup to do here. So I'm going to reduce the opacity of this layer, pop a new one keep things clean. And once again here, I'm going to go over the shape, uh, starting again from the center of the head. So I'm gonna start with the top portion of this guy's hair, keeping in mind my, uh, my shaky leaf shape. And with this method, your style will vary greatly depending on the amount of, um, of stamps of the shape that you use, right? So in this case, I had that, that shaky leaf stamp that I'm using pretty much all over, but still not that many times, right? Maybe like a dozen of times. I have a dozen of hair strands in my case. But if you wanted to go for something that's maybe a little bit more realistic, well, you could have a lot more than that. Or if you're going for something that's even more stylized, have fewer of them. And then zooming in here, you can add a little bit extra details. Now, I will admit a big part of this process here is just in, in line management. So you gotta get good at line art. And uh, well, wow, I just happened to have a tutorial on line art that you can find right here in the top right corner of the screen. When it comes to this guy's haircut though, uh, pretty much done. Of course, my line is still a little bit rough, but that will do for now. So real quick to wrap up this video, I'm going to move on to the, the female characters here. They've been waiting all this time. I'm sure they're also eager to get their haircut done. Now, when you have a lot of details in your hair like this, it becomes a little hard to follow the rule of thirds. And so it's definitely something that you can kind of adjust at, at the end or closer to the end. And the idea when you have a lot of details is to, instead of considering like each strand of hair like this as the shape in which you need to maintain the ratio, well, instead you can kind of just look at the entire mass of hair in one area. So let's say you have a big strand, you'll have no problem adding those details. But what if your strand is like that? I mean, with the curve here, the overlap, a little bit of shadow, that's already pretty detailed. So it will be harder in this particular case to add details within the shape. So instead, what you can do when you have many of these, and it's already pretty busy, well, you can add extra busyness in between, so in the empty space, right? So before, after. Like this, it's a little bit hard to understand where these strands are, how they overlap. But the second that you add more details so that the strands themselves now become the least detailed part of the shape, then suddenly this starts to read a lot better. It feels more full. The fact that we're maintaining our ratio properly, the rule of thirds, makes it so that we can actually look at this and understand what's happening. It's chaotic, but there's an order to it. But uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this is how I tackle hair. In my case, I really like the texture that I'm able to get here. And that's just thanks to my brushes. But worry not, you can download uh, the same brush right here in the top right corner of the screen. Link down below as well. Now, some observations here. Well, hair is not easy. It's like a mix of fundamentals and more advanced skills. If you want to get better at it, I highly recommend that you do the exercises here or practice the things that I mentioned at the beginning of the tutorial. So practice drawing geometric shapes in a perspective, interacting with one another, practice drawing ribbons, flowing in the wind, twisting around. But anyways, in terms of the process, at least, I hope this was helpful. Now, what do you do once you have a cool haircut and a character like this? Let's say you want to shade your drawing. What if you want to improve the line quality? Maybe you're wondering how to paint the skin or how to color your characters overall. Well, I've been busy in the last couple of months and I'm going to link all of these tutorials down below for you to check out. Because I think all of these are pretty relevant. As usual, if you end up, you know, using any of these techniques, using my brushes, whatever. I always, always love to see you guys' posts on social media. So don't hesitate to tag me. Everybody knows by now that I try to share a lot of stories, a lot of tweets from you guys to send over a little bit of traffic as my own channels are growing. We're all growing together. And just like this particular tutorial, tutorial was requested a bajillion of times in the comment section of previous videos. Do not hesitate if you have a good idea for a future tutorial, write it down below. And like I do every single time, 
I'll be going through every single comment, making sure I read everything. So if this was helpful also, uh, <laughs> you know, let me know. If it wasn't, let me know also. So next tutorial is gonna be even better. In case it helps, I'm also going to make these characters available for download. So the PSD, if you want to focus on hair and you don't want to bother drawing a new character for it, there you go, feel free to use them. Not commercially, but for personal practice as much as you want. That's it for today. I love you. Make sure you practice every day and come back next week for a new video tutorial.